What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC Vegas 80. We got Grant Dawson going against Bobby Green. And we are back for another DraftKings MMA Picks video. This week, we are breaking down UFC Vegas 80. We got an 11 fight card. And yeah, I think it's a pretty good DraftKings card overall. Really looking forward to it. Um, as of now, we only lost one fight. We lost the Montel Jackson to Chris Gutierrez fight. I think the uh, I think Gutierrez is fighting next week against Alatang Haley. But yeah, we still got 11 fights. I still think it's a really good card. I'm looking forward to being back after a one-week break. Uh, before we get into the picks, if you guys can please do me a favor. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. That will always be much, much appreciated. And it is the beginning of the month of October. If you guys want some extra content, some content you do not see on YouTube, be sure to check out DFSbythenumbers.com or the Patreon. Um, there you'll find my fighter stats, my targets, projections, ownership projections, my rankings, my DFS article, my optimizer, and much, much more. Be sure to check that out. Link in the description below. And also be sure to check out Underdog Fantasy. I'll go over my favorite underdog fantasy play later in the video and use that promo code on underdog at DFSBTN. But with all that out of the way, I say we get right into the video. We're going to start, as always, with our fight. Doesn't go to decision lines. And up top, we have Joe Pfeiffer going against Abdul Razak Alassane. They have the fight. Doesn't go to decision sitting at minus 550. And I think this is a very, very good fight to target. We have Pfeiffer sitting at 9,300. Abdul Razak Alassan is sitting at 6,900. And I think somebody's getting served here uh, within probably the first round and a half. Uh, the fight is actually minus 150 to end inside the very first round. And I can kind of see why. You take a look at Abdul Razak Alassan. This guy has 12 wins, 11 of which come in the very first round. And Joe Pfeiffer's been going out there and finishing, you know, guys in the first round as of late. Amadovsky round one, uh, Mearshirt round one. And I'm assuming he's going to go out there and try to finish Abdul Razak Alassan in, in round one. So although Pfeiffer is uh, really expensive this week, I think he has more paths to victory here, especially with the grappling. I think if he can go to the grappling, he'll have a significant advantage. Will he do it? That'll be uh, yet to, to be seen. But um, if not, if he goes out there and stands and bangs with Abdul Razak Alassane, I still think he could win that fight. But at that point, that's going to give Alassane a path to victory. So I'm going to have my fair share of, of Pfeiffer here. But I think in terms of a pump play, Abdul Razak Alassane is a guy with power, first round upside, and a guy that can't be ignored. But yeah, really good fight to target to kick it off there. Uh, Kuda Laba Linz. This is a Ayanku Lava fight, and which it's pretty much going to have to be targeted, especially these price tags. We got Kudo Lava sitting at 8,300, and Philippe Lenz is sitting at 7,900. Uh, Kudo Lava is just a complete wild man. He's a first round or bust type guy, and uh, those are fights you want to target. Like if if, if Ayan Kudo Lava goes out there and wins this fight, there's a very good chance he wins it, and probably in the first round. Um, if this fight does reach the second round, though, it's going to heavily, heavily favor a guy like Philippe. Leap lens. Ian Kudalaba, killer be killed fighter. Uh, Kudalaba, about a 90% finish rate, and he's been finished in seven of his eight losses. So I think uh, both guys are live to finish this fight. I think if it's early, it's probably Kudalaba. And like I said, if this fight does reach the second round, it's going to heavily favor Philippe Lenz there. So really, really good fight to target, especially at these price tags. Moving on, we got uh, Drew Dober going against Ricky Glenn. This is more so just a one-sided one -sided fight for me, if anything. Drew Dober, 9500 He's very expensive. He's the most expensive fighter on the card, which kind of concerns me a little bit because I think he is going to be decently high-owned. There are actually some other you know fighters I do like more than him. But, yeah, Drew Dober is a guy that has a lot of knockout power. I am predicting him to go out there and get the knockout. But at 9,500, I don't love it too much. Um, obviously, he, can go, he could go out there and knock out Ricky Glenn in the first round. I'm actually picking that. But the thing that kind of worries me is Glenn has only been knocked out once in 31 professional fights. Um, and that was his very last fight there. So this fight was to reach the second or third round or, or even go to decision. Um, you know, Drew Dober is not going to be optimal with the the no no grappling upside whatsoever for Dober. So I think he's kind of first round knockout or bust in terms of making the optimal lineup this week. So I'm not going to have a ton of them. There's guys I like better, but I still think he is in play. And then as far as Ricky Glenn, I'm not really touching him at all at 6,700 there. Uh, and then we got Grant Dawson, Bobby Green, the main event. And this is minus 250 for the fight is a good decision, which kind of surprises me a little bit. A lot of people are taking this fight to uh, actually go to decision. 
Uh, I do think it finishes, though. I think Grant Dawson probably does finish Bobby Green within the first three rounds. If he does not finish Bobby Green within the first three rounds, I think it's going to get a little bit iffy in that fourth and fifth. We've seen Grant Dawson slow down multiple times in third rounds before. So, uh, But yeah, I think Grant Dawson's going to take Bobby Green down, and I, I don't really think Bobby Green's going to have an answer for it. I think Grant Dawson's going to get into dominant positions here, whether that be Mount or or taking the back, and I think Grant Dawson eventually gets Bobby Green out. I'm going to have a ton of Grant Dawson this week. 90 for 100, very expensive, but I think he's well worth the price tag there. As far as Bobby Green, I'm not going to have much, but you know I could, I could definitely make a case for him, but I think he's going to have to definitely survive an early storm here and take over late, and I just, I'm just not sure that happens. So more so on the Dawson side for me. And um, well, sticking with Dawson, core play, favorite play of the week, Grant Dawson, 9,400. He is going to be my highest exposed fighter this week. Uh, just extreme wrestling upside. Ever since he moved to ATT, he's looked a lot better. His first uh, full camp at ATT was in his last fight against Demir Ismagulov, and we saw improvements. And I feel like we're kind of seeing improvements each and every time we see Grant Dawson step into the cage. He's looking better and better. And if we do see a uh, you know more improved version of Grant Dawson, which is very possible with his second camp here, full camp. At ATT, at only 29 years old, I mean, I think, you know, Grant Dawson could be a serious problem in the division. And I think it's a pretty, I don't want to say easy fight, but it, it, it kind of is against Bobby Green. Bobby Green, 37 years old at this point. He's well-rounded. He's good everywhere. But I just think Grant Dawson is going to be another level on the mat there. So give me Grant Dawson to win this fight. Within the first couple rounds, I think he puts up one of the highest, if not the highest scores on the slate. Uh, next, we got Bill Algio, 8,400. So this line's actually crashing down. And I won't be surprised if... um. This line might even flip. It looks like it's approaching a pick -em. So a lot of people are on the Alexander Hernandez side. I think it's a very solid fight to target overall. But I do lean towards the, the Bill Algeo side, and, and here's why. Um, I actually think Hernandez is probably skill for skill the better fighter. But, you know, there's there's three attributes that I think uh, Alexander Hernandez are, are missing. And, and that is the cardio, which is very questionable. We've seen it's not just one fight, not just two fights, not just three fights, not just four. It's like five, six fights where this guy's slowing down really bad as the fight goes on and, and getting finished he's finished been finished like four or five times in the UFC uh by good guys but still he's, he's getting finished so I don't like the cardio next I don't like the durability he's getting finished in pretty much all of his losses I think five of six losses he's getting finished not a look and I don't think he has much heart as well when the going gets tough he looks for a way out whereas with Bill Algio he has heart he has toughness he's just extremely durable and he has cardio so all, although I think Hernandez is probably the better fighter but for how long is he the better fighter? So I expect Bill Algie to, to put a pace on here and finish Hernandez in the second or third round. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people seem to be on the uh, Hernandez side this week, which is very interesting. And I get it to an extent, but I will never uh, be able to trust Hernandez, especially against a, a guy as tough and uh, a guy that has his greatest cardio as Bill Algie there. So I like Bill Algie, but um, I could definitely make a case for Hernandez. I just can't trust the cardio there. Uh, Montana De La Rosa, 8,300. I think she's going to be going a little bit under the radar here, and I think she actually has some solid upside. So De La Rosa, only 8,200. A lot of money's coming on De La Rosa throughout the week. Uh, she's taking on J.J. Aldridge. We have a striker versus grappler matchup, and if De La Rosa is able to get her way, if she's able to get this fight down to the mat, I not only think she can win this fight, but I think she could, uh, can potentially finish this fight. Uh, De La Rosa has finished all but one of her wins in the UFC. She actually has a 75% finish rate overall, and J.J. Aldridge has been finished twice in the UFC. So I think De La Rosa is very live to not only win this fight, but have a, a sneaky finish here as well. J.J. Aldridge finished three times overall in her career, uh, two of those by submissions. Yeah, I think if De La Rosa is able to get the fight down to the mat, I feel like a sub could be on the table. But if not, I feel like De La Rosa can mix in takedowns, get control time, and even in a decision win, I think she can score pretty decent here. So yeah, I like De La Rosa. Um, don't like Aldridge at all. We'll talk about that. Uh, Kanaka Murata, 8900 I really like the price tag of Murata here. I really like the matchup for Murata. I think she's going to be able to get takedowns at will here. Um, Demopolis, she folds like a lawn chair. Anybody tries to take her down ever. We saw Corey McKenna get takedowns with little to no resistance on the Contender Series there. And yeah, Murata is a very, very good wrestler. She's a very good grappler, and she's dangerous as well. I actually think she's live for a finish here against Vanessa Demopoulos. Uh, but at the very least, I see her going out there, getting multiple takedowns throughout this fight, getting a ton of control time, some strikes mixed in there. I think Murata can put up a very big score here, and she's not even 9K. So I really love the price tag here for Kanaka Murata. Moving on to the GPP plays here. Uh, Joe Pfeiffer, 9,300. Um, he's a finisher. He's finished, I think, all but one of his wins, Joe Pfeiffer. He's very dangerous. He's um, a very good grappler with, obviously, a, a ton of power, Joe Pfeiffer. And we've seen Alassane 
only been knocked out once in, in five losses, but you know, we've seen Alassane put in some really bad spots on the mat against Jacob Malkoon. We've seen Alassane hurt multiple times as well. Uh, Manir Lazez hurt him a couple times. Uh, Chaos Williams finished uh, Alassane in like 60 seconds. So I do think Alassane is, is definitely finishable, and I think Joe Pfeiffer is going to be live for a finish in this fight. Um, if this fight does reach the second round, it heavily, heavily, heavily favors Joe Pfeiffer. I kind of think Alassane's round one or bust. So, um, yeah, I like Pfeiffer here. I like Pfeiffer to uh, to get a finish and put up a pretty big score here at 9,300. Uh, Drew Dober, I'm not as crazy on. Um, I do like Joe Pfeiffer more than Drew Dober. And I do like Grant Dawson more than Drew Dober. And I do like Murata more than Drew Dober. But Dober would probably be the, the fourth favorite guy up in that, that high 9K range, um, high, AK, high, high 8K range with Murata as well. Uh, just because I think there is a chance he goes out there and finishes Glenn in the first round. It's just if he doesn't, I do have some concerns about him paying off this price tag with, with no grappling. Because at least with Dawson, you absolutely have grappling upside with Murata. You absolutely have grappling upside. And even Pfeiffer, I think, has some sneaky grappling upside as well. Whereas Dober has none. So he's kind of reliant on that first round finish, potentially a second round finish. So I don't hate Dober, but I like the uh, other fighters around him a little bit more. Uh, Kudalaba is always a in play. He's always a GPP play. This guy's round one or bust. If he wins this fight, it's a round one finish, and he puts up one of the best scores on the entire slate. He can't be ignored, and I won't be ignoring him. I'm going to be playing a, a decent amount of this Lens Kudalaba fight. I think it's very important this week. And then uh, Joaquin Buckley, 8,700 knockout threat. This guy's finished, I think, all but one of his wins in the UFC by knockout. 75% knockout rate overall. Um, Alex Marone has been knocked out three times. We've been seeing him get hurt more and more um, throughout the last couple fights. Alex Morono very hittable. He's willing to eat one to give one, and I think that could be to his detriment here. Um, yeah, I, I think Buckley, the difference between these two, Morono and Buckley, is I think Morono is going to be the more volume uh, heavy guy, but it's going to be Buckley who's just a much harder hitter and it's really not even close. I mean, Buckley has just a ton of power. So I think a Buckley knockout is very much in play here. Uh, moving on to the underdog play of the week. If you guys want to check out Underdog Fantasy, use promo code DFSBTN. Get yourself a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. It helps me. It helps you. It's free money. And the play of the week this week is going to be Kanako Murata. I'm taking the higher than two takedowns. I think it's maybe like a, a one takedown in each round type situation. And if for some reason this fight does get back to the feet after Murata takes her down, um, I think Murata's taken Demopolis right back down. I think every time she goes for a takedown, she's going to get it. I think Demopolis is going to provide very, very little to, to maybe no resistance at all. Just because but Demopolis likes being on her back. That's her game. She's a BGJ black belt. I think she's going to be comfortable to be on her back, and that's going to lead to some very easy takedowns for Kanaka Murata. So give me the higher than two. I think she gets um, at, at the very least three takedowns in this fight. And cashes that there. All right, uh, moving on to the live dogs. We got Philippe Land, 7,900. Um, uh, the majority of people that Kudalaba fights are, are live dogs, and that's because of the, the kind of five minutes of cardio type thing. That's the uh, the making a lot of mistakes type thing on the Kudalaba side. I mean, this guy makes a ton of mistakes. He's been finished uh, like seven or eight times in his career. And Philippe Lins, he's a black belt in BJJ. Philippe Lins has power. I don't think Philippe Lins has the best cardio, but he's absolutely going to have the cardio advantage here against Ayan Kudalaba. So I guess it comes down to him just being able to survive those first five minutes. If he does that, I think he can take over and get a finish in the second or third there. Uh, Johnny Munoz Jr., 8,000. Uh, this is a fight that I don't love, but from a DraftKings perspective, um, at 8,000, I, I do lean towards the Johnny Munoz side. I'm actually picking a Ricci Long to to win the fight, but I don't like Arichi Long on DraftKings at all. Um, the reason I do like Johnny Munoz from a DraftKings perspective is, for one, he's cheaper than Arichi Long, and for two, if, if Munoz does win this fight, if Munoz does get his way, he probably gets a submission, to be honest. He gets takedowns. Um, he's a very good grappler, BJJ black belt, and you've got to imagine he's going to have just a significant advantage on the mat here. So I don't love the fight, but Johnny Munoz Jr. at 8,000 makes a lot of sense this week as a live dog. Um, and then Alex Moreno, 7,500. So, yeah, I, I think if this fight goes the distance, which I don't I don't think it does. If it does, though, I, I think Moreno probably wins the fight. But Moreno also has some sneaky finishing power in his own right. Moreno does hit decently hard. Not as hard as Buckley, but we've seen Buckley finish multiple times in his career. And I think Moreno does have more ways to win this fight. I personally think Moreno probably gets knocked out here. Uh, but if he doesn't get knocked out, I think he can go out there and pull off the upset and, and uh, score pretty decently as a pretty big underdog here, but I think he probably does get knocked out. 
Uh, Diana Belbita, 7,600. Belbita, her volume is incredible. Landing 6.59 significant strikes per minute. And if she's able to keep this fight standing for 15 minutes, like even at a loss, like I really like Belbita for cash games this week. Because even at a loss, I think Belbita can go out there and put up a, uh, a pretty big score just with the amount of volume she throws. And if it turns out this fight is standing for, for three rounds, I not only think she's going to put up a, you know, a decent floor, though, I think she has a solid chance of winning. Like, this is going to be a very close fight, but it all comes down to the game plan of Karolina Kovalkiewicz. I think if Karolina Kovalkiewicz wants to win this fight, she's going to have to implement the grappling, and we'll see if she does or not. But if she doesn't, I think Valpita is very, very alive in this fight at 7,600. Moving on to the pump play here, uh, Abdul Razak Alassane, the definition of a pump play, 6,900, 12 wins for Alassane, all 12 by knockout. 11 of those wins come in the very first round. If Alassane is able to pull off this upset, he is going to be on the optimal lineup, and it is probably going to be a first-round knockout. I think you have to have Abdul Razak Alassane, at least a little bit of him, anytime this guy fights. He's very, very dangerous. I think Pfeiffer wins this fight, but 6,900, it's uh, definitely worth some shots this week. And then the fade is going to be J.J. Aldridge, 8K, uh, no grappling upside. In my opinion, no finish upside. Um, if she wins this fight, I see a very, very, very low score here. Pretty easy fade there on J.J. Aldridge for me. All right, there you guys have it. Uh, thank you for checking out the video. If you guys can please leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, be sure to check out DFSbythenumbers.com if you want extra content. The DFS articles already posted. Everything's already out. Uh, pretty ahead this week feeling good I already have my lineups made so hopefully all these fights stay uh, intact there but yeah it should be a fun week UFC Vegas 80 best of luck everybody and we'll talk to you guys very soon see you